So we all know that orcs love punching, stomping, crumping, daka, all, all that good orc stuff. And some of the especially crazy ones with who collect enough teeth and find a willing mech pay to get themselves wired into a tin can with lots of saws and guns and claws. So this week on Let's Talk Tactics, we're looking at the Orc Death Dreads. Anvil of War! Let's Talk Tactics! Hey guys, welcome back to Anvil of War Gaming. And uh, before we kick off this week's video, I would like to extend a huge thank you to all of our subscribers and those who... Uh, routinely watch our content. If you guys like this video and you haven't seen it before or you haven't seen our content before, feel free to uh, like, share, subscribe. It's the little icon down in the right hand corner. Just click that and uh, you'll be able to see all the new orc videos that are coming out. Thanks guys. So uh, this week we're looking at the orc death dread. So we'll start with the stats. The orc death dread starts or starts. It doesn't degrade at all because it's under 10 wounds. So it has a movement of 6 inches, a weapon skill of 3+, plus, a ballistic skill of 5+, plus because it's an orc. Uh, it has some 8 wounds, it has 2 attacks base, but we'll get to that later. It has a leadership of 7, and it also has a 3-up armor save. Uh, so it comes stock with 4 weapons, more than what you'd normally see on a Dreadnought in the, the puny weakling Imperial races. Um, so it starts with 2 big shooters, uh, strength 5, assault 3, neg 1, 1 damage. And it starts and has two uh, Dread Claws. Now these are times two strength, neg three, flat three damage. It can swap any of these for um, any combination of the following. A Scorcha, which is heavy D6, eight inch range, strength five, neg one, one damage. Uh, a Rocket Launcher, which is Assault One, uh, 24 inch range, strength eight, neg two, three damage. Custom Mega Blasta which is 24 inch range, uh, assault one, strength eight, neg three, d6 damage. And then um, the dread saw, which is a little bit, it's the, it's the claw light. Um, so it's plus four strength, neg two, two damage. And going back to the combat weapons, both the claw and the saw give the dreadnought an additional attack for each one that it's armed with. So if you load this thing up with four melee weapons, it gets plus four attacks. So now we're talking six attacks. That's proper orky. So for special rules in the Death Dread, we have your typical uh, Daka Daka Daka. If you don't know what Daka 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 is, go watch my other orc videos because they they explain all that. Uh, here we go. It allows you to reroll any or all of your charge dice, which is really nice. And then um, it has the explodes. So on a uh, whenever it dies on a six plus, or you roll a dice on a six plus, it explodes. And then it does D3 mortal wounds to everyone within three inches. It's just, it's a smaller vehicle, smaller chance of hurting a lot of things, but it can happen. Um, and lastly, it has the dread mob rule. And dread mob means that you can buy these guys in units of up to three, but once they deploy, and the keyword is once they deploy, they, uh, they split off into separate units. So you wait until you deploy them, and then they split up. So for synergies, uh, there's only two units I guess that you could synergize this guy with or these guys um, and that is the death kill war trike because he gives all vehicles uh, the option to advance and charge kind of like the boss with his wall for infantry he does it for vehicles so any vehicle that you want to get stuck into melee going up the field um, make sure you keep one of those guys around because it helps you get there that much quicker and then he's a vehicle he doesn't have an invuln save, so you know what we're talking about. We're talking about the big mech with custom force field. He is a staple in all orc lists. It's just where you want to put him because you can only take so many. So if he's not busy running around after your boy mobs or protecting your mech guns, he can march up with the boys because they have a similar movement. Uh, he's one inch slower, but uh, if he advances with them, that's fine. And then he creates a little bubble that gives your uh, your killy... not going to say killy cans because that's another unit, but your killy orc wired into cans um, a valuable invuln save, which can help keep them alive and help get them stuck in and crumping. Um, after that, we're, uh, we're looking at clans. So they can obviously take any clan because they're orcs, but the ones that benefit the most, them the most I find, uh, there's two that are really, really good. And for me, those are uh, Death Skulls because that gives them an innate six up invuln save. It also allows you to reroll any hit, wound, 
and damage roll each time it shoots and fights. So that's nice. It's really good with your custom Mega Blastas. Because, I didn't mention it earlier, but they're, they're Orc Plasma, and we always overcharge. Safety, always off. So when you roll those ones, you take a Mortal Wound. But if you have that Death Skulls re-roll for that Mortal Wound, or for that one, you re-roll it, you get a hit, something dies. Beauty. Um, so that's the that's a good clan for them, I find. Um, the other good one is more melee focused, I guess. Um, and that's Evil Sons, because it gives them the plus one to move, plus one to advance, and plus one to charge. So it gets you up there faster where you want to be. But it also can be, if you take a DACA one, it can get you into uh, range quicker, right? Um, other clans, I like taking Goffs. We'll get to that later, um, because I like Goffs. So that basically gives you your exploding sixes to hit in melee. Um, after that, we have Bad Moons. Gives you reroll ones. So if you're crazy and you arm in with four custom Mega Blasters, you can reroll all of those ones if you get super unlucky and roll all ones. So it really helps. Um, and then in Psychic Awakening Saga of the Beast, we got Tin Eds. I touched on that in my Mega Knobs video. Go check that out. It's really good. Um, and basically... It gives you plus one to hit in melee. So now this thing's hitting on twos, which is proper killy. Er. <laughs> um, so that's really it for clans I've found. Um, custom jobs, because now we can take those. So these guys benefit from three custom jobs. You can only take one, but or per unit, you can only take one. But they all have their benefits. Orchimatic Pistons gives you plus three inches to your movement, which makes these guys movement nine. Allows you to re-roll advance rolls. So if you get one you don't like, um, you can re-roll it, get a better one. Which stacks really good with Evil Suns. So now you're moving 10 inches with these things. You're re-rolling your advance roll, getting plus one to that, and then you're charging if you brought along the Death Killer War Trick. Uh, the other one, or the other, one of the other two is uh, Sparkly Bits. <sighs> sparkly Bits. <laughs> it's one of my favorites just from the name alone except for maybe the boomer okay boomer um so sparkly bits gives them plus one to hit with their ranged weapons so it just makes them shootier which can really help when you're bringing in those um four custom mega blasters or your four rocket launches or even if you just want to get a couple extra shots in with your big shooter that's the way it is uh and then there is um dirty gubbins was the other one. And that gives you minus one to be shot at. So it's like you're belching so much smoke out of these diesel exhausts. They're they're rolling coal and uh, you're minus one to be hit, which is always beneficial. Um, it helps you get into range. It helps you close the distance while negating incoming damage potentially, which is nice. Uh, so that's really it for custom jobs. So for stratagem support, um, there's not a lot for Death Dreads. There are a few that I like and there's an honorable mention as well. We'll get to that. Uh, if you went the Death Skulls route, you can take Wreckers. Um, it's it's more of an afterthought. Really don't build around this by any means. But it's like if you have the only thing that's stuck in that turn is your Death Dread. And he's stuck into like a Knight. And that Knight's on an objective or something. Uh, playing Wreckers is a really good way to help get rid of it even more. Um, so what Wreckers does is basically allows you to reroll all wound rolls against, um, against a target vehicle. Shit, sorry, I can't remember. It allows you to re-roll all wound rolls against a target vehicle for that uh, for that phase. So it helps you get the damage in. You're typically wounding a knight on threes with either your strength nine or your strength ten, and then you're re-rolling that with the flat three or the flat two damage to help punch that right through. It it can make a difference if you need it to. Um, the other one is the teleporter stratagem. Now you know how I said back when we were talking about the dread mob. So the Teleporter Stratagem is when you go to deploy, um, actually now in 9th edition, correction, in 9th edition now, you actually have to declare reserves before you start deployment. But once you declare your reserves, the unit that you bought, the three-man, potentially three-man dread unit, goes into reserve that's going to arrive via teleport. So the teleport itself counts as its deployment, which means it only splits into three different units once it deploys via teleport. So it's a good way to get three Death Dreads deep striking instead of one if you're paying to outflank one or whatever. Or buying one-man units, buy three. Why not? If you were planning on taking three in your list. 
So that helps get your guns in range if you have shorter range weapons like your custom Mega Blaster or your Rocket Launcher. It also helps you get up there ready to charge things. So uh, you deep strike in, you get your charge that you can re-roll thanks to here we go. Maybe your evil sun, so you get a plus one. Now you only need an eight inch charge at a deep strike. Y you see where I'm going here. It's the typical orc strategy of just throwing something up the table and getting it into melee, whether it's jump, teleport. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> right on. Um, so, and the other one is Saga of the Beast. Psyche Awakening gave us a bunch of unit specific stratagems. So the Def Dread got one. And it's called the Dreaded Death Machine, which is <laughs> so badass. Um, basically what that does is you pay one command point, and then for every model he kills, he gets an additional attack. They don't themselves generate more attacks. It's not like the 6th the edition Death Company Dreadnought that everyone hated because it would just turn into a blender. Um, there, it, it has been, it, it is rule-proofed to say you cannot just spam attacks out of this thing. But it does get more than just its six, five, four attacks, whatever, however many arms you armed it with, melee arms, that is. And that's why I like running mine as goths, because once it gets stuck into melee, you turn on the dreaded death machine, and now it has exploding attacks on sixes, and then every time it kills something, like your Primaris Marines with their two wounds, or your aggressors with their three wounds with your claw, you get an additional attack. So you can easily have one of these things, if you get the charge off, walk through an entire unit of aggressors in a single turn, which is... Excellent, excellent point return for this thing. So keep that in your back pocket if you're bringing Death Dreads. They're pretty good. Um, now, segueing more into... Oh, no. I had an honorable mention for stratagem. See, I almost forgot it. Um, it is ramming speed. Now, that's an, an orc codex stratagem. And you choose a vehicle. When it goes to charge, it gets to roll 3d6 inches for its charge and keep all of them. It also gets to re-roll them because of here we go. So it gives you a potentially 18-inch charge. Remember, you can't declare anything outside of 12. But if you're worried about making it, that can really help you. Now, I say that's an honorable mention because I like to save that for my Bone Breakers or my um, Gorgonauts. Stuff like that that I get more return out of. I'm not saying a Death Dread won't give you return, but two command points is a big investment, right? So if you have other things in your list that you want to get stuck in, you throw Ramming Speed, boom... You get your 18-inch charge, and if you make it, you pick a unit within an inch, and then on a 2-plus, it suffers D3 mortal wounds. Mortal wounds. Because you bowled it over or something, right? Just the impact. Just knocked some, <laughs> knocked some wounds out of it. Um, so segueing into weaknesses. Um, if you're playing against Death Dredge, you don't know what to do, or if you are playing with Death Dredge, you want to be mindful of these things. Now, they only have, at most... Six attacks base. That's assuming you don't get dead, dreaded death machine or goffs exploding attacks off. They only have six high val or high quality attacks. So if you drown this thing in fearless hormigons, it's never gonna move. <laughs> and I hate to say it, but you can easily bog it down with cheap troops, and then it can be stuck there. Um, and then the other thing is move blockers or screens. Now, I you don't see a whole lot of these so much in ninth. I've personally found, but you used to see them a lot in eighth. And we'll have to see what the future holds. But basically, they can't fly. They have a relatively slow movement, um, unless they're coming out of Deep Strike. But even if they are coming out of Deep Strike, if that cheeky guard player has these really tasty Lehman Russes or whatever else, and they just blanket 10 guardsmen there, you have to go through them. You can't go over them, right? So it's, uh, it's something to be mindful of. Now, you can proof yourself against especially that one. Um, and we'll, that'll segue into how I prefer to run mine. I, I've touched on it. I prefer to run mine as goths. I also prefer for loadouts. I'll give them two claws or three claws or two claws and a saw, whatever I can spare the points for, because the saws are a bit cheaper. And then I give them a scorcher. And that's exactly why. Because you move up, you have your scorcher, it auto hits. It's strength five, neg one, one damage. It, it'll, it eats guard screens for breakfast. And now that vehicles can shoot into their own melee and heavy or um, and flamer template weapons aren't classified as blast weapons, you can still shoot this flamer into your melee. So if you do get bogged down by a swarm of griblies and you just want to fight your way out or you want to get out to get to that juicy Lehman Russ or that 
unprotected Farsi or whatever it is, right? You can scorch a bunch of gits and then waddle over and crump the other gits. It's, <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty good. Pretty simple, pretty good. Orky. Um, so that's how I like to run mine. Now, Def Dreads are really cool to me. I, I really enjoy the model. I really enjoy how zany they are. Um, I always fl get flashbacks to Dawn of War where they're just running around, shoot, smash, stomp, shoot, smash, stomp. It's just, it's hilarious. If I can fit them in my list, I'll almost always take one just for that reason. Uh, if I've missed anything um, regarding Def Dreads, if you guys have combos that you prefer to run, loadouts, etc., be sure to let me know. Comment down below and let the community know. So uh, until next time, thanks guys. Sponsored by. <laughs>